So it's been another week into Destiny with Shadowkeep. I'm back once again with a heap of stuff to talk about. Been collecting all the secrets and news and loot stuff and things you guys are going to want to know about all compiled into this one video. Going to be talking about a lot in this one. So drop a like rating if you're feeling kind and want to support my videos. And let's jump into it. So let's talk about our old friend Oryx. Why is he being brought up again in Shadowkeep? So this all stems from the big secret inside of the Collector's Edition. Bungie is basically back at it with the puzzles and the codes and an online ARG, similar to Warmind. But inside this here, Cliptogriff, which I showed in my last video, is actually a pretty important bit of text from the Hive, and that's why it's all locked away. Even when you unlock the text, it then has to be decoded, which is always is thanks to the many smart people on the internet coming together trying to solve and decrypt it. But when this was officially solved, it turned out to be a bunch of really weird and interesting text, which we'll talk about in a second. And then Bungie released five new pages all about Oryx, so you can see where this is going to be heading. So long story short, this text and why it's so important is why we might be seeing him real soon. It tells us that Oryx has basically got a group of super dedicated fanboys obsessed with him, trying to bring him back to life. And this also ties into Eris Morn, the Pyramid on the Moon, and the Touch of Malice exotic scout rifle. So for some context, as we know, Oryx is pretty smart. He figured out the Guardians or something would probably kill him and devised a master plan to basically live forever. He wanted to make himself a part of whoever killed him. A pretty cheesy loophole if you think about it. That's basically how the hive work. So he hid these calcified fragments around his dreadnought for us to find and then learn about his backstory. That's what those books of sorrows were. That's how they came to us. Then it led us to a weapon which Eris would make in revenge called the Touch of Malice. Even though she did it to try and get back of the hive, she ended up kind of furthering Oryx's plan. And even though we took him out in the raid properly, he is dead. What's left of him lives right here inside this gun. So that is Oryx right there, all his remains. And it's also currently in Eris's possession as well. We haven't seen that since Destiny 1, but Eris does have Touch of Malice. And so technically Oryx as well, who's still on the gun. So going back to the new text that Bungie just released, this is all about how these high fanboys think Eris is their key to bringing Oryx back to life and resurrecting him. They think the more Hive that we kill on the moon, the more we apparently make their wishes into reality. So Hive magic is pretty weird. It's kind of like there's always a loophole. There's always about philosophy. So if they will something into existence, it eventually will come true. It does sound like a cheap way to just bring old stuff back, but for the Hive, it does actually make a bit of sense. Bungie did also kind of plant the seed way back when we first killed Oryx and got the touch of Malice, so this plotline has kind of been here the whole time of him living through this exotic. Now, the Pyramid on the Moon, as we know, is bringing back nightmares of all the things that Guardians fear and cause us trauma. For Eris, that is still Oryx. She hasn't gotten over it. And the Hive specifically mentioned at the end that Eris awakening the truth, which answers the lies. That would be the darkness or the pyramid she woke up. But also, more importantly, that Oryx has one final test for us. So it's definitely shaping up that some kind of combination of the Hive wanting Oryx to come back on the moon and also the Pyramid Ship and Eris were somehow going to create some form of Nightmare of Oryx. That's how it's definitely shaping up. It's also not the most surprising thing ever. We've seen so many little mentions of Oryx here and there and even the likeness of him in the Reckoning, but I don't think we're going to get some kind of big raid boss version like the original version in King's Fall as some important enemy. I think he's going to be more likely just a special Nightmare Hunt or a secret mission that's time-gated or potentially we'll see him in the dungeon. But either way, Bungie clearly went through a lot of effort to make this super complex puzzle, and the entire point of it is this text about Oryx. So we've got five new pages all about Oryx's followers being absolutely certain they will bring him back. So again, the way the Hive work, if they believe something hard enough, it will basically come true eventually. So I wouldn't be too surprised if you see Oryx pop up somewhere soon. Now, as a side note, while we're on the topic, the Dreadnought is also definitely worth mentioning for the future. Not something we'd see in Shadowkeep, but... The famous end cutscene, of course, used to be a roadmap, but is now no longer accurate with Shadowkeep. So we saw Mercury was, of course, Curse of Osiris, and then Mars for Warmind, the Reef Forsaken, and the Dreadnought was the next one, but it got replaced with Shadowkeep, of course. Then a big gap before the darkness arrives, those pyramid ships. Maybe Bungie just delayed this roadmap by adding Shadowkeep instead with the Activision split, but the original plan was to definitely do an expansion on the Dreadnought or Saturn or one of its moons like Titan. With Forsaken just last year, Bungie actually added a bunch of the Dreadnought loading screens, flying animations, and music that you could see sometimes flying into a Titan mission just next door, of course. There were also the audio files back in Destiny 2's launch that mentioned they're returning to the Cosmodrome, which we did a few times recently, the Hellmouth, which of course is Shadowkeeper, numerous lines about us revisiting the Dreadnought, and of course a character saying, hear me out, what if Oryx is not dead? So it's been there for a long time, and all these theories about Oryx returning and going back to the Dreadnought have been there for a while, but only now they've got some proper substance to them with what Bungie's doing and teasing, so it's a question of how much they've changed from the original roadmap, which was definitely to go to the Dreadnought before the Pyramids. 
So again, if you ask me, I think Oryx is just going to be a small part, some kind of nightmare that will show up in a form of Shadow Keep. But in the future, if we do go to the Dreadnought, I think it would be tied to one of his sisters. But that's just getting speculation. Either way, I love seeing all of your speculation and theories and what you guys think. So let me know down below in the comments. Now, because of this, there's also been a lot of discussion over the touch of Malice. Is that going to return with Oryx and how would that even work? It is probably one of the weirdest and most unique exotics in Destiny history, to be honest, and it would definitely need a massive perk overhaul if it were to return. It was really the true definition of a raid exotic. It was only useful in literally the last two encounters of the King's Fall raid, and anywhere outside that, the gun was basically hot trash. It was, had no purpose other than just being that DPS weapon inside those encounters. You probably could make it work with some kind of healing rifts and some Word of Radiance maybe, but for the most part, even though this exotic would be super important for the story of Oryx and Eris, it would still need some massive tweaking. Not sure how it would work in Destiny 2, but to be honest, Bungie have been doing a pretty good job returning Destiny 1 exotics, especially recently The Last Word, Thorn, Whisper, Thunderlord, Bad Juju, the Outbreak Prime as well. These weapons are some of the best weapons in the game right now and definitely upgraded from the D1 version. So I could see it again. They could just do the same thing for the Touch of Malice, but it would be very cool to see a usable version that's actually good anywhere else. Let me know what you think in the comments. What do you guys think about this? How do you think they would bring it back if they actually do? Now, moving on to an exotic that we do know is coming, there is one in particular we haven't had available just yet, and that is the Xenophage. Probably one of the coolest names for an exotic we've had in a while, but this is set to be on a separate quest, unlocking the same time as when the dungeon goes live at the end of this month. This is going to be the equivalent of the Wish Ender Bow, so it's going to be related to the activity. But it's also very unique in that this seems to be made from the actual pyramid ship. So this is our very first piece of loot actually made of whatever that material is on the pyramids. I've spoken about that before. Apparently touching pieces of it gives Guardians hallucinations of the darkness. So a lot of weird stories, but the end of it is almost the same as that door we float into. So it's going to be cool to see essentially a weapon made of pyramid tech. And it does pack a serious punch as well. It fires explosive bolts actually. So almost like a rail gun or a mini grenade launcher. I think more importantly, it does also fire solo, which can be nice to have in the sandbox an alternative to Thunderlord or Hammerhead. This on paper should be a very nice addition to the weapons. So next up, let's talk about the Iron Banner. This one's been pretty controversial. A lot of people are unhappy about this one in particular, and Bungie has been doing some changes and fixes for some of these problems. Now, one of the most glaring issues was that it took about a month to find a game if you're in a fire team because some matchmaking issues, but Bungie has since fixed it, so it shouldn't be an issue anymore. Although weirdly enough, a lot of people did notice as well, it did kind of create almost like a freelance playlist in the mode because all the teams, most of them, were just stuck in orbit for so, so long. Meanwhile, all the solo queuing people could just hop straight in, almost made almost like this weird solo queue version of Iron Banner with all these teams stuck in orbit. Another pretty unanimous complaint was that Iron Banner is just not rewarding enough, which is definitely a shame and there's nowhere near enough loot as we've probably been used to with recent, especially DLC size expansions. Normally it's a massive event refresh, a ton of new roles and weapons, but this one is definitely not the case. It is, as always, a pretty decent way of just increasing your light level. It's a consistent grind that I know some people either love or hate the armor sets, which is probably the main reward, but probably the best thing you can get from Iron Banner right now is nothing to do with Iron Banner. These are the enhanced versions of mods. So these things are actually super, super rare they don't drop that often at all so definitely take advantage of such an easy way to get them right here normally you need to do some serious nightfall farming but iron banner just basically gives them out so definitely a decent way of getting them but it's probably the only good reward in iron banner these days there was also quite possibly the strangest and funniest glitch that I've ever seen in Destiny. So this caused so much confusion that Bungie just changed it altogether. And I can imagine casual or new players were probably even more confused as why they changed it. But with this Iron Banner, you actually can't go straight to Saladin and just spend tokens. You have to do this quest first. Now, partway through this quest, there was actually a broken step, which was basically the real challenge is to figure out what it actually wants from you because it is not as it seems. The quest says that it wants super final blows. The icon shows grenade launcher kills. And for some reason, it wants neither. It actually wants submachine gun kills. So it's a super weird bug. I guess some coding got messed up somewhere, but... Bungie released a tweet which basically read like a meme. It was pretty funny. They said, We're investigating an issue where the conviction quest says to land 10 super final blows to earn progress, but shows a grenade launcher icon. This step is actually progressed by earning 10 final blows with submachine guns. So just a super random tweet, but that is basically the explanation of the bug. But since then, they have actually hot fixed it. So this step is going to auto complete. They just got rid of it. You don't need to worry about it anymore. But I can imagine a ton of just super confused people wondering what this step actually wants from them because neither of the things do progress it but i mean if you only use recluse you probably could have done the step by accident without knowing but either way it has been fixed and it's probably going to go down as the most confusing step in destiny history 
So as well as that, there was also some stuff going down with the maps. Of course, if you may have noticed, it was on rotation of just three. So it got a little bit samey. I didn't massively mind because the maps are pretty decent, but it does definitely get very repetitive just getting the same maps, especially Widow's Court just over and over again. Although it is a nice map, you definitely want some variety in there. So Bungie have actually said Iron Banner's first two days have been an intentional showcase of the newest Crucible maps in Destiny 2. So of course, I want to show off the new stuff, but... From Thursday onwards, the rest of the week is going to feature a varying mix of both new and classic maps. So expect to have a lot more variety in terms of map controls. So pretty good they've addressed that. I'm not sure if they initially had always planned to have just three maps for the entire week or they just changed it because of all the feedback. But either way, expect to see some more maps from now on. And now for an update to Akora's master plan for the Vex to invade the tower. More importantly, the working conditions have seemed to improve. We've got some safety railings up there, so the welders down there from last week have mysteriously disappeared, but either way, it actually resembles a portal now. So again, this is Bungie's evolving world and changing, adapting features. This example, and it's gonna be pretty cool to see this big portal eventually week after week slowly get finished in around a month from now. Although to be honest, I think most people can kind of unanimously agree that this portal is just an awful idea. I mean, of all the places to put a vex portal this is quite possibly the worst but we'll see i also do wonder what's going to happen after it's done and once we actually kill the undying mind inside here like when the season ends are they just going to dismantle it and take it down slowly or are they going to keep it active maybe it sends you somewhere else or maybe there won't be a tower after it's finished because the vex just destroy us all but either way there's your update to what's happening inside the tower and akora's portal so let me know how you guys are getting on with Shadow Keeping. Give me all your thoughts down below in the comments. I say it all the time, but I do massively appreciate all the love you guys have been showing on my videos. I've been trying to focus on quality over quantity and just work on some cool videos and discussions. I know you guys are going to enjoy. So if you want to show some support, that little thumbs up button goes a long way. If you want to be the first to watch my new videos, then make sure you have those notifications turned on. But I do hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll see you all in my next video.